Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar slash in-person event um, in which we will present uh, MinorCode and more specifically MinorCode Europe, which is a European network uh, promoting open tech education, um, specifically aimed for refugees, migrants, uh, and asylum seekers. Um, before diving into our presentation, um, I want to give a very special thanks, obviously, um, to Informatici Centra von Bera for organizing this festival and obviously also for inviting us to speak about our project and about the different organizations uh, involved. So just a bit of an agenda, very shortly, um, just for you to have an idea of what we will present and who will present. Um, so we have Laura, um, who's going to give an introduction to the situation of uh, refugees in Greece, but also in Europe, just to have a bit of an introduction to the topic uh, of migration, um, then I will take over again and speak about the purpose of the network that we are presenting, um, and also specifically about a program that came out of this network um, in Barcelona. Um, then Natasha will take over speaking about the work she and her organization board is not doing um, in Zagreb, Croatia, and also how uh, Erasmus Plus, the Erasmus Plus program uh, of the European Union is integrated into the microcode network, followed by Lorenza from ISF um, speaking about how, how ISF and their basic literacy courses uh, are also connected to the microcode network, but also including a bit of a yeah, general the connection between ISF and this network. So let's start uh, with the first speaker who today will be Laura from Social Hackers Academy. She is a project manager, uh, mainly focused on uh, fundraising, but also doing uh, a lot of other things. And um, Laura. Thank you, Vincent. Okay, so first of all, thank you all for being here and for seeing us also online. So I will do an introduction on why my group started and also how Social Hackers Academy, which is the organization that I'm representing, started and why we are focusing on refugees, migrants, and asylum seekers. So, yeah, so Social Hackers Academy is a Greek NGO that it was formed and established in Athens, in the capital of Greece, in 2017. Uh, we focused on the sector of information, communication, and technologies, and um, also in the vulnerability and integration of the refugees, migrants, and asylum seekers, as I just seen. So why are the target group and why this specifically this sector? It's because in 2015, as you will probably know, we have this um, huge crisis, the migration crisis, as we call it right now. Um, and we also identified two needs. One, the reintegration, the need of reintegration of those people that were constantly coming through the sea and through also through the land uh, to Europe and that needed to be reintegrated. And at the same time, we saw how the labor market, especially in the technological sector and advanced technological skills, were having like uh, a lack of skills and a lack of people covering those skills. So we decided to try to reintegrate those people into the labor market in this um, sector. So, um, in just as a context, in 2015, only in 2015, 856,070. 723 people came to Athens by sea, by the Aegean Sea, and at just in August, July, August of 2016, more than 1 million people were already in Greece. So the situation was very chaotic, and the problem, the main problem that uh, Greece faced, but also in Europe uh, countries, we saw that um, a lack of support from the government and the international institutions. So that meant that NGOs, local NGOs, national and also international, were covering all the humanitarian help that was needed in terms of shelter, in terms of food, in terms of mental health assistance, or physical health assistance, in terms of legal support, education, etc. So that implied that all the organizations around Greece and refugees in, in the refugees camp, in the islands, but also in the main cities like uh, Thessaloniki, Patras, and uh, Athens were trying to deliver those people with the support that they needed in order to integrate the society. That's how I would say in 2017. So 2016 was a very critical year in Athens and in Greece in general. Uh, so, so education, we think that education is the main key 
to renovate those people also because as I mentioned it was this like Korean skills gap that was um, taking place in Athens and in Europe and it's still taking place in Europe. So yeah what happened in 2019 is that Greece faced a new government, a uh, new democracy which is a conservative right party. The government was given support as much as they could. They were not doing such a great job but when the conservative party came into force and uh, started ruling the government of Greece, they, they enforced like the they try to put much more security borders. They have like uh, they're trying to control the inflow of refugees coming. So that what happened is that if Greece was already a transit country and we were already seeing how really they were the asylum seekers were trying to get the applications, but they really, whenever they could go to Sweden, to Germany, to other countries where they could have like better life conditions, they were just leaving. After um, the new government established in 2019, that situation even reinforced um, the transition, the Greece as a transit country. However, we could see that uh, last year and after the pandemic, differentiation to population, Greece, along with Cypre and Malta, was uh, Cyprus, sorry, <laughs> Cyprus and, and Malta, had a really huge name, uh, number of applications on asylum seekers and especially focused on accompanied minors. So, uh, even though the figures have lowered down in comparison to the huge migration flow that we noticed in 2015, there's so much work we still have to do, and that work translated into projects like this one, like Migrant. And under that context and under that umbrella was how um, Migrant was born. And, and so now, as I said, the main origins, the country origins are Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. But there are so many also inflows from different European countries, like with different profiles, like for example in Spain and Italy, where the population comes more from North African countries. So it's interesting how the different organizations work with those target groups, that with the same focus, which is reintegrating this vulnerable population into the society through providing a good and advanced technological skills. Also, having support our next speakers will talk about. So, so yeah, that's mainly the situation that Greece uh, faced and also European, uh, the European countries faced, and now Greece will introduce our focus about micro. So please listen. Thank you, Laura. Um, it's a very good introduction indeed into the base, the base problem or the base uh, challenge that we face in Europe, but well, all over the world basically, but now we're specifically talking about Europe. So I want to speak a bit about the purpose of the micro network and also more specifically. Uh, about what the network can lead to and already has led to uh, in the past, but well, still. So, just a quick summary of why did we start this and, and what, is, what are we trying to do. So basically, uh, all the organizations involved uh, within the MigraCode network, in some way or another, they offer technical education um, for migrant, refugee, asylum seeker populations or communities uh, and specifically to those who don't have equal access to the labor market or to education, um, while with that also improving diversity and inclusion, um, and from the complete other side also to um, yeah, support the demand for uh, high technical skills that are currently in high demand uh, coming from tech technological, technological companies um, all over Europe who need highly skilled web developers, highly skilled data analysts, uh, etc. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the quote of Nelson Mandela here is simply based on the fact that we really believe in open education, free education, and that is at the core uh, of this network. Um, so what does this network build on? So there are six pillars at the moment um, that are very important to always keep in mind when talking about this network, that's say key futures. So, as I said, open education, all the schools that are actually teaching in this network offer, at least for a part, cost-free education, specifically uh, to refugees and migrants and asylum seekers. Um, all organizations, in one way or another, focus on actual labor integration. So it's not just uh, giving education and then good luck with the skills you learn. No, actually trying to make the connection with companies 
and trying to uh, connect students to job opportunities. So, as you'll see in a bit, the network is also very much based on European uh, funding from the European Commission. Um, so, there are different projects involved from the EU. Um, even though there are obviously corporate partners also involved, the core of the network and also the purpose of the network is that there is no profit involved. We are not working together to make profit, it's, it's simply to make a social impact uh, and support the communities that we want to support. So having said that, so we, we are the basis nonprofit, but we do work with the corporate sector, we do work with organizations, for instance, for hiring or for funding. Um, so we do actually work very closely at the same time with, uh, with the basis business. Um, and then also very important, so the network is not just a collaboration in Spain, for instance, no, it's all over Europe. So all the partners that I will present in a bit um, are actually yeah, in, in many European countries. <coughs> As I was saying, and this is an important detail, the network is supported by various different European projects with different topics. Natasha in a bit will give an example. Um, but all these European projects in the end aim are somehow connected um, to these six pillars in one way or another. So on curriculum development or how to better support our target groups, uh, etc. So I really like this slide because you see the flags of where we are coming from and this network has only been there for around two and a half years and we really involved all these countries into the network and organizations from all these countries. Um, so you see as Laura is coming from Social Hackers Academy which is in Athens, Greece. We uh, from Open Cultural Center running a micro program in Barcelona um, but we also got partners from Copenhagen and Denmark obviously ISF, uh, Italy, and etc. So it's already a, a real European network, um, while at the same time not excluding potential future collaborations outside Europe. I mean, we do have, the individual organizations do have partners that go further than European borders. So now this all sounds really nice, having a network like this, um, but what can this lead to? And what, well actually, what does it already lead to? Um, and I can give a very specific example of what we are doing at Open Cultural Center in Barcelona. Um, we started Microsoft Barcelona. Um, so this was the first pilot program from the first Euro European project that we did in, this, uh, in the context of the European Microsoft Network. And it is exactly what we try to promote. So a tech academy for refugees and migrants. So not just offering coding courses, but any kind of course related to technology. Why? Well, because in Barcelona specifically, and you'll see that with all the schools, they operate in places where obviously there are many migrants and refugees and asylum seekers. And that also goes for Barcelona. So, for instance, in Barcelona, there's a huge Pakistani community, but also huge communities from Morocco, Colombia, Honduras, Peru, and Venezuela. But then also many more countries, mainly from Latin America, but also from Africa. Um, so, Barcelona is a good example where all nationalities, all, all ethnicities come together. So we see in, in Microco Barcelona, for instance, that we have to keep many different uh, cultures and nationalities in mind. Which makes it cultural, but like real multiculturalism. Um, so just like the Microcode network, you will see that our pillars on which this program was built on are very related to, to the pillars that are the key features I presented earlier on the Microcode network, um, European Microcode network. So obviously, open education, the courses are free. We focus a lot on community building, so bringing local people together uh, with migrant communities through volunteering, through teaching, basically through education. Also, one of our main pillars is labor integration. So we connect with local and national and international companies to find jobs for our students. And I will give some examples of successes of that. Um, and specifically in Barcelona, and this um, is something uh, that works well in Barcelona as our additional support pillar, which includes also psychologists, legal support, and with personal mentoring in a way, in a holistic way. Say. So, 
I'll be honest, these results are not even 100% up to date. Uh, on our website, uh, you can find uh, the most recent results, but uh, this, I think, was a few months back with 41 graduates since October 2019 when we had our first course. Um, right now, we have 132 accepted students, although I think in the last months this went already up to 165, uh, if I'm correct. Um, a relatively big part of our students are uh, women, uh, which is something we try to focus a lot on because, as you may know, in tech there are not so many women, especially if you talk about the actual web development teams, for instance. Um, often it's five, between 5 and 50 percent only. Uh, plus, for migrant communities, it's often harder to get women involved due to many reasons. So we try to engage the women from migrant communities to also join our programs. Um, we work, that's an important aspect I actually forgot to mention, many of the schools, including ours, um, work mainly with volunteers. So the teaching, for instance, with us is done through volunteers from the tech sector. So it may be a web developer from Adaptive of New Relic or Lenovo who is teaching at our school. And this obviously is the actual impact that we want to make, like not just offer education, but actually find jobs and with that change lives. Um, because finding a job, finding stability, finding an income that is stable enough to support yourself and your family is obviously a big life change. So um, out of those 41 graduates, 31 actually found new opportunities, um, which can be different things. It can be a tech job, it can be a tech support job, it can also be further education. Basically, we count anything that either brings them financial stability, even freelancing jobs, um, or further education. Um, out of the 31, 19 were actually in tech, in technology, like web development or more advanced tech support. So it works. So just to finish uh, about the impact part of like the very like, like from, from the very top of a network, a European network going down to the city of Barcelona and going down to the micro level of our students. And what happens to those students? So we have many students finding jobs, and these are three examples. Um, Shaheen um, from Roj, which is a quite large technology, technological company. Um, Shaheen is from Bangladesh, and he really went from, from being in a very difficult situation um, to having now, after also promotion and turning in Roj, having a, being a software engineer, full software engineer. Um, Ananda, uh, Ananda Maya from Venezuela, from, from Venezuela. Um, who got a job at free now? Um, so both these students, they applied themselves, also with support from employability volunteers, to these jobs, and they found proper uh, full-time software engineering jobs. And Rahaf from Syria, um, she was actually the first student who found a job through Microcode Barcelona, found a job as a workforce manager, which has a lot to do with data analysis, uh, at WebHelp, um, and also for her, this was a huge challenge, um, but through a job fair that we organized, she got in contact with the manager of this project who was completely, completely crazy for, about her from the start. I was like, I want to hire her. So we supported her and WebHelp with the progress, and in the end they were able to hire her. And this was in the full lockdown in Barcelona. So that was not an easy process, but we managed. So that was Microco Barcelona and the purpose of the network. And now Natasha from Borders None, the founder and current manager of Borders None, I will explain a bit about Borders None, um, but more specifically how Erasmus Plus, how the European Union is directly integrated uh, in the Microco uh, network. We are a school in Zagreb, Croatia, and we have a very similar approach as a school in Barcelona, but I will tell you a bit more about how we do it and why we do it. Uh, the context in Croatia is very similar to Greek context, so not so much numbers, but in terms of uh, countries of origin. Uh, also, unaccompanied minors who come to Croatia, numbers uh, of those people, and uh, also uh, 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 the thing that uh, Croatia is, as a Greece, still pretty much transit country. 
So uh, at order of none, we believe in inclusion through connecting with, connecting with like-minded individuals and learning new skills. Uh, this means that we are also very focused on labor integration, but what we think is that we are making an impact also on uh, social inclusion of people who are coming to our courses and our students. Uh, also, uh, in terms of soft skills, uh, gaining new soft skills and uh, acquiring uh, new uh, uh, professional contexts, which might be useful not only in IT but also in other uh, professions. So uh, this is what uh, we teach in our school. We teach HTML, we teach CSS, JavaScript, and digital literacy. But what our teachers are mostly uh, saying, we teach problem solving, uh, which is very, very important skill uh, because not all of our students will end up in IT profession, but all of them will learn uh, problem solving and acquire skills uh, which are important in, in other fields also. Uh, who we serve? Mostly people uh, who are students in our classes are from Middle East, uh, uh, around 90% of them. Uh, some of them come from Africa and uh, some of them, others come uh, from other countries, uh, which, uh, which could be South America, but also some European countries like Ukraine, uh, or uh, uh, for example, uh, Tur Tur Turkey, which is neighboring country to the EU. Uh, and our students are mostly in age group between 20 and 40 years, but as you can see, our youngest student was uh, 13 years old. So if there is an interest, uh, we don't have age limits to uh, approaching the course. Although, of course, mostly interested are in the age group between 20 and 40 because they are actively searching for job opportunities. And uh, how do we do it? Uh, so we have a beginner's course, which is three month beginner HTML and CSS course. After that, we have project assignment, which is something in between a beginner's and advanced course. And uh, it is two months time on working on a project by uh, support of mentor teachers on that way. And we have advanced course, which is three months advanced JavaScript course. Uh, and also we have digital literacy course, uh, which is kind of pre-course to all these courses, but also uh, people who don't have an intention to, uh, uh, to enroll to, to coding courses, they also attend digital literacy course. And we do it with the teachers who are uh, volunteers. So that's very important to emphasize all our teachers uh, are volunteers. And uh, this is the thing with which we struggle the most. It is dropout rates. Uh, the reasons for dropout rates could be various, but uh, there, there was uh, two years ago 60% uh, dropout rate from our courses. And that's why we started and saw opportunity uh, through Erasmus and joining Microcode Network to learn more and see the reasons behind the dropout rates. Um, uh, this is one of the examples what we do within Erasmus. Uh, there are some other topics also, but I will tell you a little bit more about this one. Uh, so we do it through Erasmus partnership with other organizations who are uh, working in the similar area, like Microcoach Barcelona and uh, SHJ from uh, Greece. And uh, in this particular project, the aim was to find out which, which could be the reasons uh, why people are dropping out. Uh, in order then to decrease dropout rate and provide our students uh, more um, inclusive education and opportunity to, fin to actually finish the course. We started with focus groups in the schools uh, that were carrying out courses at the time. Uh, 
to find uh, to uh, get the insight uh, from uh, the target group why do these dropouts uh, happen. Uh, then after that we uh, try to tackle this, these reasons through, through uh, different learning and training opportunities with our partners and we worked on uh, the things that might lead to dropouts such as curriculum, uh, motivation and external factors, teaching methods, certifications and evaluation. Uh, we, uh, through the work, we adapted our curriculum to suit the best needs uh, of group that we are working with. Uh, and also we tried to see what motivational and external factors could lead, lead to dropouts in order to support our students in, in the way that we can uh, to finish the course. Um, and also the same way about teaching methods and certifications. So how could we improve our teaching methods for students to stay in the course and to make it easier for them uh, to finish the course? Um, and uh, how certification is maybe uh, important or not important factor in, in the whole thing or decision of staying in the course, finishing the course, or uh, dropping out. These two last things uh, are uh, expertise of our partner, Informatici Senza Frontier, and now Lorenza from that organization will tell you more um, about it and how ISF is also uh, working with digital literacy courses uh, through Microcode Network. So thank you, Natasha, for your introduction. We are ISF. The meaning of ISF is more or less uh, ICT technicians without border. And in the in our name, there is also the mission of ISF. That is uh, that one of fighting digital divide, both in Italy and in developing countries. Uh, we work mainly in three fields that are uh, digital training for vulnerable people in Italy and in all and everywhere. Uh, so not only with migrants, we work with all fragile categories. And we work also for, with ICT for disabilities and ICT for cooperation to development. In fact, we started exactly from that, from uh, cooperation to development. It was 2005. And there was an hospital that was in Angal in Uganda and asked us to develop a software uh, specifically based on the needs of an African hospital that are very different from ours. Uh, so we developed, we started to develop open hospital that is a very important uh, of our activities. Uh, it, it is still alive though, and uh, it is used uh, everywhere in the world. It's an open source uh, and free software, so everybody can use it. Mm, after that, uh, we started uh, teaching on, on the medical staff how to use Open Hospital. After that, we started also to build computer labs in Africa, teaching how to use the computer, and training the trainers. That is really something very important for us because we uh, we will believe that uh, to improve the knowledge is something really that can change the world. Uh, of course, uh, in our categories of uh, work, there are also migrants. But the situation only last year, that was in the in the middle of the pandemic period. Uh, we did more than 300 hours of digital literacy for migrants and asylum seekers. Uh, that is a, a huge amount for us. Uh, but uh, we are talking more about digital literacy because the situation of migrants in Italy is a bit different from other parts of the world because uh, here uh, in Italy only 12% of immigrants have high qualifications. The most of them come from Africa. So uh, the, the countries 
that they declare mostly are, for example, Tunisia, that is more than 38%, and Algeria, uh, Ivory Coast, uh, South Sudan. So um, they don't have very high qualification and they need uh, mostly uh, digital literacy courses. Uh, in fact, uh, at the end, uh, most of them uh, can find the job as worker, uh, waiter, uh, domestic worker, uh, farm hand. Uh, so uh, we are a little bit uh, back compared to other countries. Um, so what is our role in this project, uh, uh, after what I have said? Uh, we are evaluator and experts in ICT education because we have 15 years of experience in these fields. Uh, here we are uh, in Rovereto uh, and we are uh, during the third training of this microcode project and we are talking about uh, uh, the curricula developed by the other organizations involved in this project. And also, uh, we are talking about teaching and training techniques, and we are trying to create a common framework of evaluation. Uh, why we are here in Rovereto, that is not a very famous place, but it's uh, our place because it's uh, the place where we have every year our uh, festival. We have a festival that is uh, uh, a festival on how to use ICT for social development and social inclusion. So it's really uh, inside our topic and our focus. And this festival will, will want also uh, to invite everybody on a reflection on uh, how to use technologies in a proper way, uh, inclusive and technically responsible. So thank you very much to everybody for being here and I hope uh, to see you again in Roberto next year. Thank you. Uh, very interesting to see also the role of ISAC, which is obviously a big part of our uh, visit here in Roberto. Um, I don't know that any questions came in. Does anyone have any questions? Did something come in in the uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube chat to answer? They were really clear. <laughs> there are no questions. I hope we're really clear. Rest here. I mean, if there is no questions from the chat, um, I think there are no questions in the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, since there are no questions, uh, that uh, I assume we were really, really clear, uh, which we were. Um, so now, yeah, thank you for you um, for speaking and for explaining why we're all part of it. And um, yet again, thank you for to ISF for giving us this opportunity uh, to speak today. Thank you.